again, football fans, Liam Cook here from Coventry United TV with episode three of our brand new interview series, CUTV's Team Talk, uh, where we bring you everything you need to know about Coventry United players, past and present. We started off strong in our first two episodes with Joe Cairns and Rhys Francis talking us through their footballing journeys so far. And uh, today, we're talking to a man who has known success and heartache, a player whose experience is fair share of bad luck, but who gets back on his feet every single time. I am, of course, talking about the dreadlocked dynamo himself, Dominic Elaine, the Coventry United Vice Captain. Now, me and Dom have known each other for a while, since our school days, in fact. And even back then, I knew he was a very talented footballer who was unbeatable on his day, although it took me nearly 10 years to learn how to pronounce his name properly, as uh, I'm sure you'll find on some of the older CUTV videos. Uh, but not only is he great to watch, he's a great person to be around. Uh, his teammates and the Red Green Army will uh, surely tell you the same thing. And while he's struggled with injuries over the last couple of years, the work he puts in to get back on that pitch cannot be understated. Don's story is certainly an interesting one, so let's take a look at the career of the one and only Dominic Lane. Dom, thanks for joining us here on CUTV. Uh, firstly, how have you been doing during lockdown? Are you missing the uh, beautiful game? Hello, everyone. I hope everyone's keeping well. Um, yeah, lockdown hasn't been too bad for me, to be honest. Um, I've just been working, as usual, mainly from home and using the spare time to try and get fit really. I've been going on a lot of runs, working out at home um, and just trying to be ready for when we're allowed to get back playing. Well, we're hoping to get up and running uh, with some friendlies in the not too distant future once the restrictions are lifted. Are you and your teammates excited to get back on the pitch? Yeah, all the boys are buzzing. Hopefully we can get some friendlies uh, booked in as soon as possible. Hopefully the fans can be there to watch us. and. We're a very close-knit group, we're a very tight squad and all the boys are missing each other and um, we haven't seen each other for a while now so it'd be good to get back out there playing and get back around each other. Of course you've been uh, struggling with a couple of niggling injuries over the uh, last few months. Has the time-off enabled you uh, to get back to full fitness? Yeah, I've been, I've been struggling for a few seasons now. Uh, I'm actually waiting to find out about a knee operation. Um, so we need to wait and see how that goes. But I'm, I'm as fit as can be. I've been out running, my knee's fine. Um, I've been training at home, everything's fine. So hopefully I can just get back around the lads as soon as possible. Be involved in the squad uh, when we do get some friendlies on the go. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to try and get back on the field and get back playing. I wouldn't say I'm back to full fitness. I don't think I've been at full fitness for about the last six years. So. Uh, Hopefully I'm as fit as can be and can at least be involved in the team. Well, you know better than most uh, how tough it can be uh, to miss out on games due to injuries. Uh, how do long-term issues hamper the uh, not just the physical but mental well-being of a player? Yeah, that's a, that's a very good question. Um, long-term injuries, physically, from my personal perspective, they've hampered me a lot, mainly because I've been very stubborn. Uh, and not really listen to when I've been told to sit out, miss games, not train, rest, you know, um, that's, that's, I love playing, I love being around the lads um, and it's hard to sit and watch from the sidelines so I've tried to push myself through things long term that maybe I shouldn't have um, and that's, that's, that's hindered me with a full recovery so i've actually think this time covid times has been a blessing for me because it's actually given me time to just rest let my body calm down do the right things um so yeah hopefully hopefully that's that's helped me um mentally it's it's down to the person i believe i feel like i'm fairly mentally strong mentally tough um so it hasn't been an issue it's it, it's, it's disheartening when you when you're trying to play you do 20 minutes, you do half an hour, and, and you have to you have to come off. Um, you're trying to push yourself for the thing. Everyone wants to be involved in squads. Everyone wants to be involved in the starting 11, especially with the squad that we've got. Uh, we're all very close. It's a very tight -knit squad. The, the quality level's there. Everyone's pushing for places, and you know that an injury 
will keep you out of the squad and then good performances you trying to get back in the squad you have to wait your turn and no one wants to do that so mentally it's it's tough but you just have to push on uh dan we've got a very good physio he knows he knows he's, he's one of the best um and you just take his advice do what you can to get back as soon as possible um and everyone's always there for each other as well the lads are always if anyone's out injured everyone's on to them making sure they're okay making sure they're doing the right things so mentally and physically it is tough but when you've got good people around you then it makes things a lot easier and of course injuries don't just uh, affect your playing capacity but they can also affect your work life as well yeah work life um again again for me personally i i have a very physical job i was in a very physical job um so on top of trying to play trying to train being on my feet grafting all day um, it was it was no good for my knee um, but again you don't really have much choice you've got to get out there you want to play you want to do things that you love and then you've got to go out and earn money so um, it is it's, it's not nice I personally I've had some bad advice from doctors and whatever else which is why everything's taken so long um, but yeah this is, this is this is what comes with football especially when you've been playing football for years and and especially if you do a lot of other sports or whatever and you're putting your body through a lot of stress um, the injuries come and you sort of have to you have to take it you have to you have to understand that these things happen let's get to your early days in football you're always one of the, the best players at uh, Foxford our secondary school uh, but how did you get picked up by the uh, Coventry City Academy yeah football uh, it was a bit of a crazy one for me really a lot of people a lot of my friends or whatever have been playing football since they were six seven the young ages. I, I never started playing football until I was 11 or 12. I never started playing until 11 aside. It was actually my younger brother, he's three years younger than me, he was always playing and I used to go along on a Sunday and just watch him play and kick the ball around. Um, and then a few of the lads I know played for the team my age. This was down at um, Wyking FC, playing Sunday league. So I went and started playing for them um, until for a, for a couple of years. Moved on to Cov Sphinx as a, as a, as a junior. Um, these times I was as tall I was as tall as I am now at 12, 13. Um, I was playing playing central midfield, um, getting picked up by Coventry City. They actually came to watch an, uh, a striker play for the other team, and at this time I was playing centre half. Our uh, centre half broke his collarbone um, early on in the season, so I had to play centre half for the whole season. I think I ended up going to score 34, 35 goals in the season playing centre half, um, and I got picked up there. Um, and went on to went on to play for the city for a few years at the academy level. Talk us through your journey with the Sky Blues. How did you progress through the youth ranks? Yeah, so I was at Coventry City for for three or four years. I got picked up at the age of sort of 12, 13. I was there till about 16. I never actually got my scholarship there. Um, I was in a very, very tough, tough age group with the likes of Gail Biggery, Manor, Connor Thomas, Josh Ruffles. Matty Stenson, Dior Angus, like these have all gone on to, to play at a, a decent level uh, professionally and in the, in the conference. So it was very tough to try and make it in that team. Um, but again, these, these things happen in football. Being a local lad, was it ever a dream of yours to play for the Coventry City first team? Yeah, look, I think it's every young lad's dream to, to be a professional footballer. And when you are representing your local academies and stuff and, and you are a, a fairly good young talent uh, I think it, it, it is always your dream to play for the first team it's your, it's your dream to play for the first team when you're a young lad at any level that you're playing at any team you always want to play at the highest standard and, and in the best best group possible so yeah I think it, I wouldn't say it was so much of a dream but maybe a goal I would have liked to have to have reached that maybe after your time with City was up you've had a choice to make uh, for your next step uh, what were your options and what did you decide to do next yeah um, after leaving the City I had, a, I had a choice of a few other clubs to go to at the time obviously country in the championship I had a couple of League 1 and League 2 teams want me to go training with them uh, at that point I sort of fallen out of love of it to be honest um, and I didn't I went and trained with Warsaw a couple of times trained down at Grimsby uh, and I just I didn't really my heart wasn't really in it at that point so um, yeah I just stopped, stopped trying to pursue the professional game really at that point 
You spent time with a number of non-league clubs uh, in your teens and uh, early 20s, such as uh, Bedworth, Rugby and Coventry Spinks, to name a couple. Did your experience with these senior teams make you a more rounded player? I sort of, I stayed, I stayed local. I went and, I went and played for Bedworth United. Um, this was uh, under 16s, 17s. I went and joined them um, straight away. I went and played for the first team. So I was playing in Bedworth first team at, at 16. Um, and that was, I was sort of happy, happy playing around that level, staying local. I'm just happy playing football to be honest. I was never really one to try and chase the, the professional dream. I just enjoyed playing football and I was, I was fairly good at it. Um, so I'll just play at the highest level that I could, really. I personally believe um, if there's any advice to I can, I can give to a lot of young lads out there, especially ones that might be falling out of academies, is that you learn, you learn to be a lot more of a rounded player, in my opinion, playing at non-league. You learn to be a lot more physical. Um, you, you've, got to be a lot, you've got to be a lot quicker. Uh, people are on you, people are, especially if you're a young lad and you're a good young lad, people are on you, people are trying to hit you, let you know that they're there. Um, so yeah, I think it made me more of a rounded player at those teams and on league level. Um, and I think it made me it made me a, a, a tougher player. You know what to deal with at a young age. You're playing with men, you're playing with men in their 30s who've been around the leagues and you're 16, 17, uh, and they're just trying to smash you. You know you've got to toughen up a little bit. In 2017, you made the jump from the blue side of Coventry to the red side. Uh, a couple of players have done that in the past, Lewis Hudson, uh, Liam Cairns to uh, name a couple. Where does that switch rank in the decisions that you've made in your career? Yeah, again, like I said, uh, it was. It's never really been. It's always. It's everyone's dream, like I said, to be a professional footballer. But it was never really something I was willing to to chase to hinder other aspects of my life. So um, I'm happy to play football at the highest level available to me. Uh, I like to stay local. I enjoyed my time at Sphinx. I've got, uh, I've got, and I had a lot of friends there. I played there as a kid. So I, I know a lot of people at the club, um, but I just felt like Coventry United were a club that had ambition. They wanted to go somewhere. Obviously, being at the Butts, now we've got the the new AstroTurf pitch. The players that we had at the time, like bringing in people like Craig Reed, like that's a big statement. Um, so yeah, I think it was a club that had ambition. And I wanted to be a part of it. I want to be a part of where this club's going. Uh, and I think it's got a very, very big future, especially now with the new chairman. Um, he's, he's fully putting the, his back in into the, into the players and the manager. Um, and we're all a very tight unit. So I'm, I'm excited to see where the club goes. You were then handed the vice captaincy in the summer of 2018, which was no surprise seeing as you're a true locker room leader. Was it a proud moment for you to receive the vice captaincy? Yeah, I was very happy to take on the vice captaincy. Um, obviously, the skipper, Quirky, he's got the armband and he's a very, very good leader on and off the field. He's a he's a very good person to have leading your team. Uh, and I, I feel like I've learned a lot from him. I feel like the lads have learned a lot from him. And I, I obviously have my own certain set of skills. I'm very vocal in and around the changing room. I'm, I'm a bit of a joker. I have a laugh with all the lads. And I feel like that, that brings a lot of the people together. Um, but also we've got we've got 20 leaders in our squad you know it's not just it's not just whoever's got the armband there's a lot of boys out there who lead in different ways and I feel, feel like that's why we've got a very good bond everyone's willing to fight and, and dig in for each other so there's 20 leaders out in our squad it doesn't matter who's got the captain band obviously Quirky leads us in a way that a lot of other people can't um, he, he's been in and around the game for a long time especially at a professional level um, so yeah I was very happy to take the captaincy but again we've got a whole load of leaders in our team so it doesn't matter who's got it we everyone knows their jobs everyone knows what's required and asked of them um, so we just we, we push on together well, Coventry United isn't just a football club as I'm sure our new chairman Joe Haggerty uh, will tell you it's a family the fans the players the coaches the officials how beneficiary is it when the entire club is working in Newton and as, as close as Coventry United is yeah, it's uh, it's it's massive. It's massive. It's uh, massive to have have Joey on board. He believes a lot of the, in a lot of the lads. Um, obviously, I've been here for a number of years now. I've seen I've seen players come and go. Uh, I've seen the changing hands with the chairman and stuff. And it, it's uh, I've noticed a big difference. 
Uh, once upon a time, we had lads that were coming who were maybe a bit more selfish, which is fine. They're, they're more interested in their own game. Everyone's got their own objectives in football. Um, but as a team, you need to have that cohesion. You need everyone to be mates. You need everyone to be gelled together. Uh, that starts right at the top from the board. So, you know, Joey, Joey's like one of the lads. Joey's part of the squad. Terry, the gaffer, like all the lads are behind him. Um, and he's behind us. We all trust each other. It's a very, it's a very good bond that we've got. I don't think I've ever been in a squad like it, um, if I'm honest. And I feel like that that transforms onto the pitch, especially the fans that have been watching for a number of years now. I think this is the best squad um, we've ever had, put in the best performances. There's a lot of belief in the team. Obviously, the last couple of years we probably should have gone up. We probably should be in the league above now, pushing on. Um, but we still believe we can do it when the games are back on, when the league's back started. We, we know we'll go out there and we can we can gain promotion. You just ended your fourth season with the Red and Greens. How will you sum up your career with United so far? Yeah, my time at the Red and Greens so far has been okay. Obviously, I would have liked to have been fit. I would have liked to have had, uh, be playing full seasons, be playing every single game. I've got a lot more to offer to the team than what I've, what I've been able to offer so far through injury. I think when I've had a run of games, people have seen I put in I put in some good performances. I'm, I'm always battling for the team, um, and I, I love the club. To be honest, it's a very good family unit. Um, I've never again I've never been in a squad like it. I've never been in a club like it. I've never seen fans like the fans that we have. They travel here, there, and everywhere. Um, so yeah, I've enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed it. I mean, I'm excited to see where the club's going. Especially now we've got a uh, new chairman on board. Joey's Joey's got a lot of belief in the team, and he wants he's got a lot of big plans. One question on the fans' lips will be, what's next for Dom Elaine? Are you hoping to be back to your best next season? Yeah, do you know what? I've, I'm, I'm, actually, I'm, working, I'm working hard behind the scenes. I'm trying to do a lot, a lot more things to manage my body that I probably haven't been doing in previous times through whatever lack of time working, trying to be involved with the lads, be around the squad. This, this uh, coronavirus has actually been a blessing for me. Um, so hopefully when the season's back, whenever that may be, I'll be back to full fitness. I'll be able to bring a lot of my uh, a lot of my better attributes to the squad. And yeah, I'm just ex I'm excited. I'm 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 here. I'm ready to ready to push on. Now. And what of the future of the club? Do you feel United are in good hands? Yeah, look, I think everyone sees we've the club's got a lot of ambition. We're in a we're in a great stadium. We've got a great pitch. We've got a great gaffer. Great squad. The new chairman's been been brilliant with all the lads and the fans and everything so far. We've got a lot of big ambitions. We, it's, it's shown the last season, season and a half. Um, we are, we're a top team. We can compete with any teams in and around us. I think we can compete with a lot of teams in the league above. So the future of the club is is massive, and I hope uh, I hope I'm around to see it, and I hope a lot of the, a lot of the other players are around to help the club push on. Uh, I know the gaffer will be here. I know Joey's going to be here. So yeah, so the club's got a massive future, and it's exciting to see where it's all going. Dom, thanks very much for uh, talking to us and we uh, look forward to seeing those skills that pay the bills again very soon. Yeah, thanks for that, boys. Um, just last last little bit from me. I hope everyone's well. I hope everyone's family's well. I hope everyone's trying to stay safe. It's a, it's a very tough time at the minute, physically, mentally. People are people are having a having a very very tough time. Just know that it's not going to last forever. Hopefully, we're coming to the end of it now. Football will be back. We'll all we'll be back around each other soon. And uh, you know, if anyone is if anyone is struggling, anyone's having any problems, don't hesitate to message someone at the club. All the boys are here. We're all here for each other. Everyone's here to listen. So yeah, I hope everyone's well. Hope to see you soon. And uh, look after yourselves. Huge thanks to Dominic Elaine for joining us here on CUTV's Team Talk. And as always, thank you to you at home for watching. But I do have one more question uh, before we go. And that is, who do you want to hear from next? Let us know which past or present Coventry United star you'd like us to interview next week. And don't forget to uh, like, share and subscribe to Coventry United TV on YouTube for more exclusive content from the Red and Greens men's team. But uh, for now, from me, Liam Cook, stay safe. Thanks very much for tuning in and we'll see you next time on Coventry United TV.